Now we begin this hour with a war in Ukraine and another deadly missile strike overnight, this time in Lviv. It happened in the far western part of the country near the border with Poland, which is a NATO country. This newest attack from Russia leaving at least four people dead, dozens more injured. It is the biggest attack on civilian parts of Lviv since the beginning of the war. Ukraine's military says Russia launched a total of 10 missiles towards the region and seven were intercepted. Now, those air defenses have been crucial for Ukraine's ability to protect itself from Russian attacks. Now the country is deploying new ones to take out drones from above while covering the soldiers below. International correspondent Jason Bellini was invited to one unit's hidden base to discuss the dangers that they have been facing. A Ukrainian surface-to-air missile system shoots a Russian drone out of the sky above the front lines. Yes, подрыв. The Soviet Union designed the NK-33 Asa to down enemy planes and helicopters, but now its use is evolving. Units like this one fire the Asa to intercept drones. Ones the Russians used to locate and draw fire upon Ukrainian positions. The crew commander of a unit operating in southeastern Ukraine, he goes by the name Consul, invited us to visit the hidden location where they stand by to protect frontline soldiers of the counteroffensive. What's the strategic importance of this area that we're in right now? We wouldn't be here if it wasn't important. Can you say why it's important? There is a high intensity of drone flights or enemy aircraft in this sector. Our job is to cover our fellow infantry and artillery from drones. Consul says he and his unit have downed 60 Russian drones and a Russian aircraft for which he received a presidential award. The reason there aren't more Russian fighter jets attacking Ukrainians in the combat zone is units like his. For operational security reasons, we can't show more of the abandoned house Consul's unit currently uses as their base. So critical is their mission, Russian kamikaze drones are constantly searching for the location of Consul and his crew. Just this month, I was attacked by a drone. I have an injury to my left ear. We are target number one for them. Target number one. Unfortunately, yes, because we shoot their eyes down. Have they ever found your house, located your house? Unfortunately, yes, they have found us because we are a priority target for them. They dropped grenades from drones on us. It was clear they found us. Before the full-scale invasion, Consul graduated from law school, thus the call sign. He planned to be a military lawyer, but with Russia's full-scale invasion, he's more valuable here as the commander of Ukraine's 1129 anti-aircraft missile regiment. Inside the Asa, there's space for the driver and three unit members who operate the missile system. We watch the enemy on the radar, like in a movie. Here we look at the range to the target, and here we look at the screen to see what exactly is flying. This equipment looks older than you. Sure, this vehicle is from the 80s. If you get attacked, does this offer protection? Unfortunately not. His team also operates a modern British equivalent, the Stormer HVM, which stands for High Velocity Missile. Which is better? They have completely different target detection systems. OSA is simple, and with it you can find a target faster, but it betrays itself more quickly. The Stormer does not emit a signal. It cannot be detected. So using the Soviet version trades accuracy for extreme danger to the crew. So once you fire the OSA, you need to get out of there quickly? Yes, absolutely. The Western Stormer is a highly valued Russian target. Russians have released video of their successful strikes on Ukraine's Stormers. A drone recently attacked Consul's unit Stormer. Did they destroy the Stormer? The engine is running, it works. We're waiting for some spare parts. We will repair it and then go back into battle. And with infantry currently at the tip of the spear of the counteroffensive, air defense units like consuls stand between Ukraine's frontline soldiers and death. We have to cover our brothers on the front. Where they go, we will go. Jason Bellini, Scripps News, in the Donetsk region of Ukraine. Now in the meantime, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko says Wagner Group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin is now back in Russia, though that claim has yet to be independently verified and the Kremlin has yet to comment. Now just days ago, Prigozhin led the Wagner Group's brief mutiny marching toward Moscow from the south. An agreement to end the rebellion included amnesty for Prigozhin and his troops, but the deal stipulated Prigozhin was to move to Belarus. 
of news, some new information right now on what led FBI agents to the Florida home of former President Trump. Last night, the Department of Justice released a less redacted version of the search warrant used at Mar-a-Lago almost a year ago. There weren't a lot of changes, but we've learned more about what prosecutors knew before entering the property. National political correspondent Kevin Cerilli is live right now in Washington. So, Kevin, this ultimately led to the indictment of the former president, also his aide, Walt Nada, who's being arraigned right now. Um, what does this new version of the search warrant tell you? You know, it's a fascinating look, Veronica, and, and quite honestly, it's, it's a bit rare in a government investigation to have less redactions on an original court document. But we're now getting new information into how investigators ultimately built their case ahead of the raid into Mar-a-Lago of, of former President Donald Trump and his estate. Remember, uh, he, of course, is being accused of illegally shipping classified documents from the White House after he left office down to his Mar-a-Lago estate and was indicted on behalf of that after this federal FBI raid at his estate. Now, Trump, as well as his supporters, have criticized the FBI for choosing to do that. But this less redacted version shows that they actually had surveillance footage of Mar-a-Lago and Walt Nada carrying some of these boxes that ultimately were filled with classified documents. And it's that surveillance footage that ultimately led them to trying to first get those documents returned to the government. And then when they were not returned, uh, ultimately having to get those documents themselves. Now, Trump, for his part, taking to his social media platform, True Social, and saying, quote, whatever happened to the 1,850 boxes of documents that Biden won't show to anybody? And what about the documents found in Chinatown, D.C.? Uh, so he goes on to criticize President Biden and President Biden's son, Hunter. Either way, this less redacted version, likely this film footage, not only going to be utilized on behalf of the prosecution for the Walt Nada case, but also the case pertaining to former President Trump. Veronica? That's right. Kevin's really live for us in Washington. Kevin, thank you so much. And you can take a deeper dive on all of these stories and much more online. Head to our website at scriptsnews.com. You can also follow us at Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, if UPS workers go on strike, there could be big problems beyond package delivery. How it could actually shake up the entire supply chain? Also, we've heard warnings about a recession now for the past few years, but where is it? Or have we managed to avoid it completely? We're going to have the details for you after a quick break. And a reminder, we would like to hear from you. Don't forget to call us on our Scripps News Viewer Hotline toll-free. That number is one 833 scripts Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. We'll be right back. This year, Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's going to cover the repair that they weren't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. My mom told me to call CarShield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, CarShield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with CarShield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called CarShield and saved over $5,000. Yes, CarShield is a good value. Every plan through CarShield comes with a price lock guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call CarShield now before it's too late. Call 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. 
800-287-5264. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Hey there, welcome back. It is now 12 minutes after the hour and it's looking more and more like a UPS strike might be imminent. Talks between the company and unionized drivers broke down yesterday. National correspondent Vanessa Machania examines what a strike could mean for the nation's supply chain and your packages. Practice for a strike. Teamsters tweeting out these images after news broke of the broken negotiations between UPS and its 340,000 union drivers. Both sides blaming each other for the inaction. In a statement, UPS wrote, refusing to negotiate, especially when the finish line is in sight, creates significant unease among employees and customers and threatens to disrupt the U.S. economy. The Teamsters union releasing a statement as well on Twitter, quoting its president, Sean M. O'Brien. This this multi-billion dollar corporation has plenty to give American workers. They just don't want to. UPS had a choice to make and they have clearly chosen to go down the wrong road. You know, the options outside of private fleets that companies have, it's really UPS, FedEx, or the United States Postal Service. So you're losing one of those three legs. Jason Miller of Michigan State University's Broad College of Business says if a deal is not reached by the July 31st deadline, a strike would bring chaos to America's supply chain, not only impacting consumers, but businesses too. All of a sudden you're talking about sectors like national defense and aerospace production being very affected. You're talking about companies, you know, farmers are going to be getting around to go into, you know, harvest season. Well, guess how a lot of these parts get shipped from central distribution centers to, um, you know, forward dealers that fix farm equipment. They get shipped by parcel. Not all hope is lost. Miller says large companies will probably petition the White House to intervene in the negotiations since the delivery of 20 million packages will be at stake. So I think that shippers will be very aggressive and essentially pleading with the, the Biden administration to say, hey, let, let's not go through this. Please do whatever you can to get these two sides to the table and get, get them to work something out. Vanessa Mishanya, Scripps News. So the strength of the economy continues to be resilient, so much so that the Fed left interest rates unchanged last month, but not everyone at the central bank agreed. Minutes from June's Fed meeting showed some wanted to raise key interest rates by a quarter of a percentage point, but Fed Chair Jerome Powell didn't. In the end, the committee voted unanimously to skip a hike. Economists were also split 50-50 as to whether the U.S. would see a recession. The government's jobs report is due out tomorrow. Private sector jobs in the meantime rose by 497,000 in June, more than doubling expectations. At this hour, the Dow is down more than 400 points on fears that the Fed will raise interest rates again during its meeting next week. The other two indices are also in the red right now. The S&P shedding about 50 points and the Nasdaq is down 170 points. So it's been at least a year or so that economists have been warning of a recession. But the big question is, where is it? Our deputy political director, Joe St. George, takes a closer look at why the prediction missed the mark and whether it still might be possible. Predicting the economy is a lot like predicting the weather. Sometimes meteorologists will say it's going to storm and it never actually does. And sometimes economists predict doom and gloom and it never actually happens, even though the year is only half over. There is new analysis suggesting that long talked about recession may not actually happen this year. So why is that? And what risks to your pocketbook are still out there? Any story on a recession should probably start off with a definition. Merriam-Webster's dictionary says a recession is a, quote, 
period of significantly reduced general economic activity. But that's not very specific, is it? After all, Wall Street could be doing one thing, the housing market another, while the labor market could be totally different. And that's where a little-known group known as the National Bureau of Economic Research in Cambridge, Massachusetts steps in. Specifically, it's these eight economists who sit on the Business Cycle Dating Committee. They look at everything that's happening with the economy and decide if a recession is happening or not. And the country, for the most part, listens to them. Okay, that's what a recession is, but the committee's been pretty clear this year that we're not actually in one. So why were so many predictions off? The U.S. economy's actually been quite resilient. For the best answer, it's helpful to listen to what Jerome Powell recently said in Europe. Powell is the chairman of the Federal Reserve and is partially responsible for all of those interest rate hikes that have happened over the last year. You see, basic economics taught us for years that if you aggressively hike interest rates, it will lead to a drop in demand for goods and services, which can mean less revenue for businesses, which can result in layoffs and eventually a recession. So why hasn't one happened? The labor market is really is really pulling the economy. Jobs are being created. There are strong wage gains. One clue could be what Powell said about the workforce. Unemployment has been below 4% since February of last year. And while some Americans have certainly lost their jobs, the data shows many are finding new ones quickly. However, just because a recession hasn't happened yet this year, it doesn't mean there won't be one. There's more work to do, that there are more rate hikes that are likely to be appropriate. Powell has said for weeks he still thinks inflation is too high, which means more interest rate hikes are on the horizon, perhaps later this month. And there are new concerns to worry about, too. The unemployment rate did go up in May, and there is some concern about commercial real estate, with more Americans working from home and more businesses rethinking the need for office space. It's just very hard to predict the economy. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is in China right now, and she's scheduled to meet with China's number two in command today in Beijing. Treasury officials are saying that she will not be meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. Her task is to try and balance improving relations with the country while defending U.S. trade decisions made for security reasons. Hong Kong correspondent Andrew Wood says the job hasn't been easy. Well, there's a lot of things that she can talk about. Um, the firstly, national security, also a business and financial links. I think it's going to be important for both America and China to try to find some common ground. I, we've never really been in a situation like this where you have two very powerful countries who are rivals in so many ways. Uh, politically, they have different political systems, they have different economic systems, and increasingly militarily perhaps rivals too. And at the same time, they're so interlinked. Uh, Janet Yellen has said she doesn't like the idea, as I was saying, about the idea of decoupling. And she thinks it would be bad for uh, America and China if they cut links with each other and also for the world economy as well. So she, don't forget, she's also, as well as speaking to uh, Chinese officials, she's due to be speaking to American business people as well. And they seem to be a pretty unhappy lot here in China at the moment. Secretary Yellen's visit follows Secretary of State Annie Blinken's last month. He met with Chinese President Xi. The two agreed to stabilize relations but failed to agree on improving communication between their militaries. And we're learning more right now about the military vet arrested near the D.C. home of former President Barack Obama. Yesterday, federal prosecutors argued in court that 37-year-old Taylor Taranto is too dangerous to be released from jail before his trial. As proof, they cited live streams from him where he threatened to blow up a government agency and to go after Maryland Congressman Jamie Raskin and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Until his arrest last week, he was also wanted for storming the Capitol on January 6th. Prosecutors said that he showed up in the Obama's neighborhood heavily armed after former President Trump posted their address online. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, a breakthrough in long COVID research. Why doctors think a drug used to prevent opioid overdoses could be the answer. We'll be right back. Hey. Hey, I'm inside the bank. Where's the $500? What? I don't have much time. Where's the $500? I said drop your bank, not rob your bank. What? I said drop your bank and get Dave. The banking app? Yeah, I thought this was a lot of work for $500. You think? I mean, I would love it if you could uh, come get me. Oh, no. Oh, she's going to jail. 
Hello? There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. Raising children means you need support. Kizik's are the truly hands-free shoe that can handle anything mothering throws at you. Where did you get that chainsaw? Amazon? Oh, it's time to upgrade to the original hands-free smart shoe. Free shipping, free returns, free the whales. You can get your own Kizik's today. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. And checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, including ones you may miss, and alerts you if there is an issue. And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds. I know LifeLock has me covered. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call the number on your screen or visit LifeLock.com 25 now and use promo code 25 now to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at worthy.com. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use Greenlight to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Thanks so much for being with us. Context and conversation. There's a new study that might make you feel a little bit better. Okay. okay. So listen to this. On the stories that will shape each day. Here with us now is meteorologist Scott Withers. You got just wave after wave after wave. So you can get on with yours. Make sure you stay with us as we monitor this developing story. Morning Rush. Weekday mornings starting at 7, 6 central. Only on Scripps News. There. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Della Cruz. Nevada has reached a $285 million settlement with Walgreens for the pharmacy retailer's role in the opioid crisis. The settlement will be split among the state, Nevada County, and city governments. The state will keep just over $98 million and will use it to finance opioid recovery programs. Nevada is just one of several states who've reached settlements. In total, payments top $50 billion across the country. So researchers at the University Hospital in Cleveland have a promising new study out. A drug that's commonly used to prevent overdoses is now providing hope for people dealing with long COVID. Bryn Caswell with Scripps News Cleveland has the details for us. For Patricia Hill, COVID-19, its symptoms and complications won't go away. Her ceaseless battle forced her into a new normal. I doubt seriously that I'll ever get back to where I was prior to. Since getting diagnosed with COVID in 2021, the virus started attacking her heart. Hill now has congestive heart failure and fluctuating heart rates amongst a multitude of other lingering symptoms. They're not going to go away. I'm still dealing with the fatigue. Um... I finally admitted to having some brain fog. Hill isn't alone, though. University Hospital's COVID recovery clinic is booking out appointments through October. Clinic head David Rosenberg says after initial investigations, chronic fatigue is the main symptom impacting his long COVID patients. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that, that are suffering from the adverse effects of COVID. And we probably have seen over 800 you know, patients in the clinic to date. UH doctors are now in the treatment phase of their studies, researching and developing different protocols, therapies, and medications that can improve long COVID symptoms. Rosenberg says some drugs look hopeful. Naloxone or Narcan, which is a, a opioid blocker, uh, and that's been potentially useful in, in certain patients. Historically, low doses of a drug called naltrexone, an opioid antagonist primarily used to treat alcohol addiction, has shown to be effective in post-viral fatigue syndrome. Naloxone, also known as Narcan, is a rescue medication for opioid overdoses. 
It has a similar mechanism of action as naltrexone and could have similar efficacy for long COVID fatigue. There's going to be formal research conducted to see if that helps uh, you know, with the central nervous system uh, nerve endings and blocking different pa pathways in the brain. Hill has been a part of UH's study since 2022 and says she is willing to try anything if that means regaining her health. She's remaining optimistic. I'm not depressed about the changes. I'm rolling with it because there's more serious things that I can think of that um, could have happened. That was Bryn Caswell reporting for us from Cleveland. So staying active and exercising are important for your physical health. But if you aren't getting enough sleep, it can actually be bad for your brain. A new study out from the Lancet Healthy Longevity Journal shows that people who did high intensity workouts but slept less than six hours had faster cognitive decline than people who didn't work out regularly. But then in contrast, those who had high levels of physical activity and slept between six and eight hours had better cognitive function as they got older. JetBlue is giving up on its partnership with American Airlines. Formed in 2020, the Northeast allowed them to offer more flights in that region when that is dominated by Delta and United. Two months ago, a federal judge ruled the Northeast Alliance violated federal antitrust laws. JetBlue officials say they will now focus on their ongoing partnership with Spirit Airlines. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Remember, you can always check us out on scriptsnews.com. If you are staying with us, we have much more news headed your way, including the arraignment of former President Trump's valet in the classified documents case, why it took three tries to get a plea. And picking up and moving to another state, how politics are factoring into some people's decisions to relocate. Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon & Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide, free, with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high-quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax-free, and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide. 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Thursday. I'm Veronica Della Cruz. Let's get you caught up right now on the day's top stories. Russia shifted its cruise missile attacks overnight, killing five people and injuring dozens more in western Ukraine. The governor of Lviv province said the youngest person killed was 21, the oldest, 95. The Ukrainian Air Force has intercepted seven of ten missiles Russia fired from the Black Sea, which is 500 miles away. Lviv is near the Polish border and has largely been spared from damage since the Russian invasion began. Now, the president of Belarus says the Wagner mercenary group's leader is now in St. Petersburg, Russia, but there is no official confirmation of that claim. 
Evgeny Prigozhin led the Wagner Group's rebellion the weekend before last, and his mercenary group marched toward Moscow from the south. An agreement to end the rebellion included amnesty for Prigozhin and his troops, and a requirement he relocate to Belarus. Former President Trump's valet, Walt Nada, has pleaded not guilty to helping the former president hide classified documents in Mar-a-Lago, Florida. He was arraigned late this morning in a Miami, Florida courtroom. His first planned arraignment was canceled because he had trouble getting a Florida lawyer. And then his second planned arraignment was called off when his flight was canceled. As the political divide in the United States expands, more and more people are packing their bags and moving to states that reflect their beliefs. The Associated Press is reporting the swing to the left or right in individual states has a lot to do with political parties focusing on hot button issues like maybe abortion or gun rights. But pandemic policies also sharply divided people and the widespread acceptance of remote work allowed them to move. Colorado and Idaho represent opposing examples of states being transformed by an influx of politically like-minded residents. Nick Riccardi reported the story for the Associated Press and joins us now live. Nick, thank you so much for being with us today. What was the main reason that people said that they were moving and how much did the pandemic play a factor in all of this? Hi, uh, thanks for having me. The um People have been moving kind of subconsciously for politics for quite some time. Uh, generally, you wouldn't say you're moving for politics. You wouldn't really think that way, but you might think, oh, I'd feel comfortable in this place. I, I like this place more. Um, I, I want, let's say, I want to live in a city, vibrant city with um, lots of art and culture and good craft beer. Um, or I want a big yard and I want a clean place where it's not too crowded. Uh, those are, you know, you're moving, you're probably a Democrat if you're the former or a Republican if you're the latter, and you're going to move to places with other Republicans or Democrats. Uh, but it was never really, ex it wasn't very explicit. There's some signs that this is getting a lot more explicit since the pandemic. Uh, a number of the folks I talked to, the pandemic clearly factored into their decision-making process. Uh, Americans are kind of less mobile than in recent history, but there's a big chunk of people who can really pick up and move anywhere, and that's, you know, remote workers and retirees suddenly have this immense mobility. And they're um, signs that they're starting to vote with their feet, and so they're kind of accelerating this thing that was already happening called the big sort, where Americans are basically grouping together by political parties. Like-minded people go, and they want to live in neighborhoods with other like-minded people. And then as that starts happening in your state, for example, and you become a minority and everybody in your state's a member of the other party, it becomes less and less hospital to you and you begin to think about getting out. And so it's this kind of cycle that's happening that's really pushing the states and the country uh, in different directions. Do you think this has more to do with political parties or, or are there specific issues out there that are really driving people to relocate? So that's an interesting question. It's kind of a chicken and egg question. Um, Political parties have, in the last 20 years, they've become very polarized. And uh, basically, it used to be that you had Democrats in rural areas, blue dog Democrats in rural areas who were like conservative pro-lifers and Northeastern liberal Republicans, right? You, you had this kind of whole mix of ideologies in the parties. They've separated by ideology. And that process, which really kicked off in the 90s, um, has now moved into separating by geography. What happens is that the um, the issues they pick kind of split really neatly on demographic lines, um, abortion, for example, or gay rights or immigration. Um, so these divide along kind of demographic markers, you know, particularly education. And usually, people with college degrees have always kind of lived in the same area. So when all those people with college degrees all start voting the same way, they you get a, a cluster of now Democrats and the people without college degrees tend to not have any people with college degrees around them. Suddenly you have a cluster of Republicans. So it, it's kind of a chicken egg question. Did the parties, I don't think the parties consciously made this decision to do this, but is this kind of natural divide taking part through the, you know, the American political scene and, and people are kind of choosing sides increasingly. And what did you see, Nick, in terms of where folks were relocating to? What states were seeing the biggest gains and, and were people moving out of the country? So the, the piece I did is kind of more of a, a look at two western states, Colorado and Idaho, um, and contrasting them. They're not the nation's biggest states. They are 
Colorado was one of the fastest growing states. It slowed down in the last couple of years. Idaho now is one of the fastest growing states. They're getting a lot of people. These are both relatively lightly populated states, so they're not the, the biggest destinations in terms of raw numbers. But they're definitely getting people. Um, Idaho has kind of become a, a very much a kind of popular refuge for people, particularly from the West Coast, who are conservative or maybe center right. And really, you know, for many of them, the pandemic was the last straw. They want they want to get out. They want to um, they, they want to go somewhere where they feel that the you know they're surrounded by people with like minded values rather than being in the minority. And Colorado, for some time, has been kind of a mecca to you know urban young urban educated liberals who want a nice kind of outdoorsy place where they can live and play, um, but they also can you know feel that everyone's welcome and. Um, you know, strong on gay rights and progressive and, and such. And so these were kind of two states that showed the, the directions things are going. They're also states that politically have mo moved in really stark divides. They both now have super majorities in the legislature. Um, neither is due to gerrymandering, actually. You know, gerrymandering is where the state legislature can draw its own lines. And so one party that's in control just packs people in. Both Colorado and Idaho have prohibitions on gerrymandering. So it's kind of a natural supermajority that they each have. So they don't really have to worry about the Democrats in Colorado don't have to worry too much about the Republicans in Colorado. And the Republicans in Idaho really don't have to worry too much about the Democrats. And because of that, they've started to push some very, I mean, almost completely paradoxical, you know, legislation in the sense that in um Idaho now it's you know it's a it, not only is there a, a near complete abortion ban but it's it's a crime to transport a minor out of the state um, for an abortion in, in Colorado there's a law against any restrictions on abortion you know basically whatsoever in um, Idaho they've just legalized execution by firing squad in certain circumstances if you can't do lethal injection and in Colorado they've outlawed the death penalty so you, you can kind of see this is happening all around the country. Um, much bigger states like, say, Florida and Texas have become really prominent magnets, particularly Florida, for people, um, you know, seeking to move for political reasons. They're just so much bigger states they can absorb more people. But you just see it happening everywhere. We wanted to pick two states that maybe aren't as much on the national um, map. But I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the political divide in general, because Supposedly, we are more divided now than ever. So how does federalism play a role in all of this? Does federalism work? I mean, as you conducted your research, what did federalism show you about how state legislators play into this and whether or not people feel that maybe state policies, local policies do more for them than maybe the federal government does? That's a great question. You know, federalism is the is really the foundation of the United States. I mean, we're, we're talking about a, a real core American value. Federalism is the ability of basically states to chart their own course within some basic boundaries of the Constitution and Congress set. And, you know, it, it's it's act in the words of one person I talked to as a safety valve for a very long time. Whoever's in power in Washington, if you don't like what they do, you can try and get your state to present an alternative. So during the Trump administration, California was very much an alternative to Trump. And people who lived in California felt, well, even if I'm not represented in Washington, D.C., at least in my state, I'm being represented. Now, the Democrats are in power. Biden is the president. And say in Florida, conservative people in Florida feel, OK, I'm at least being represented by my government. Um, but the problem is, is that this is a, a it's a safety valve that's really bad for the minority in the state. And as things have gotten more polarized and kind of parties, the party in power in states doesn't really have to pay attention to the minority party very much. It, it's really worse and worse from a political perspective to be a political minority in these states. You feel more and more left out and more and more targeted. And so this is a real test of that that federal experiment that's that's done very well for, you know, almost um, 250 years. Uh, this this situation where it used to be also that people would split their votes, you know, in state legislatures, you might vote Republican nationally and Democratic or you might vote Democratic nationally and Republican for your state lawmaker. Now people are voting one party up and down the entire ticket. So this hasn't happened before in modern history. And so we are really starting to push the bounds of federalism. And, you know, one of the things we're going to find out in the next few decades is, is how that goes and what happens when you have a dynamic like that. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out. <laughs> Nicholas Riccardi of the Associated Press, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, we're going to explain why Twitter's new policy to limit the number of tweets you see every day is making it even harder for government agencies to do their work. We'll explain next.
I was having problems with my legs and my feet. I suffered a lot of cramps, swelling. I would dread going up and down steps. Tingling in my legs due to circulation issues. The, the aches and pains uh, have just continued to increase. Did you know if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or are over 40, your leg aches and pains could be from poor circulation? Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. Revitive uses breakthrough technology to get your calf muscles pumping like a second heart to increase blood flow, reducing leg aches and pains, cramps, or swollen feet and ankles. Plus, it's drug-free. The cramping was terrible, and I don't get that anymore. Thank you, Revitive. Revitive is FDA cleared and clinically proven to increase oxygen-rich blood flow during use. The smart stimulation works so well, over 3 million people use Revitive. As a firefighter, I'm constantly on my feet. I wish I had known about Revitive a lot earlier. Um, it would have made a huge difference in really who I am today. Revitive has given me a better quality of life because I am living without pain. Revitive reduces leg pains two times more than exercise alone in just six weeks. We want to take walks. We want to do more social activities. Just the typical things in life that I did not feel well enough before Revitive that I was able to do. Yeah, Revitive is regenerizing my legs and making me feel like, let's do more. Go to Revitive.com now to learn how Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. The doctor said, go for it. And I'm in the best shape in terms of my legs and my ankles and my feet than I've ever been. Try Revitive. You will see the difference. It works. It worked for me. Get the most out of life with Revitive. Visit Revitive.com. That's R-E-V-I-T-I-V-E.com. Or call 1-800-317-6641. That's 1-800-317-6641 today. Or visit Revitive.com. Order now. Subscribe today. Welcome to this year's cheese rolling competition. Who will catch the cheese and win the $500 prize? They are lined up and let's roll it. <laughs> Who looks like we got a first timer coming down the hill now. Is a leg supposed to bend that way? Not naturally. Yeah, look at them go. Barrel rolling down the hill. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Ooh, it's not so easy to get a quick $500, is it? <laughs> no, it's not, Dan. There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. Digging deeper into the headlines. We have some big stories to get to tonight. Shedding light on groundbreaking investigations and ending your night with something new. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Christian Bryant. Scripps News Tonight, live tonight, starting at 8, 7 central. 24 minutes after the hour now, you know, ever since Elon Musk took over Twitter, the app has undergone a series of unpopular changes that have turned off users and advertisers, including limiting the daily number of tweets that users can read. And this raises concerns for government agencies using social media to quickly share information with the public. Megan Lopez with Scripps News Denver takes a closer look at the domino effect of tweet limits. It's a sound that's become synonymous with information a sound that connects communities instantaneously. It has been that place that we could go to for live coverage of all of the things. But this week, Twitter owner Elon Musk announced the social media platform will start limiting the number of tweets people can see per day. 800 for unverified users, meaning those who don't pay, and 10,000 for those who do. Musk said the goal was to stop companies from using AI to mine data from the social media platform. But this limit comes the same week. Much of Colorado is experiencing another round of severe weather. It's been active uh, and really we don't see it slowing down. Greg Hevener from the National Weather Service in Boulder says they use Twitter to get information out quickly about storms, but also to gather information from people on the ground. So social media is a big part of what we do. We're able to you know, change the wording in our warning, say either it's been verified, we have you know, this size diameter hail falling, or a confirmed tornado has been spotted in this area moving this direction. It really helps to fortify our decision-making process in terms of whether we are issuing warnings or if we have issued warnings, 
kind of helping to beef up the wording. But during Tuesday's storms, NWS Boulder sent out this, saying they've reached their limit for tweets they could see in a day, and another saying they're finding workarounds. It kind of just limited the amount of information we could see via Twitter. It by no means did it affect our overall mission. Warnings and watches are still going out. Still, Dr. Samuel J. from MSU Denver's Communication Studies Program says for organizations that rely on Twitter's quick communications like police agencies, tweet limits can pose a problem. I do think that it it offered a lot of really, really valuable um, resources for a resource for folks. And uh, I'm just concerned with what's going to happen now. And asking people to pay to keep up to date with important information can be disenfranchising. Denver 7 reached out to Twitter's media relations team for comment. We were sent back an automated reply with a poop emoji. We also reached out to Elon Musk and Twitter on the social media platform, but didn't hear back. So for now, Dr. J says it's important for people to remember. It just goes to show that uh, companies like Twitter or Facebook or Meta uh, that we lean on for so much of our life, especially news gathering, they aren't necessarily there for that. They're there to kind of keep us engaged. And as long as these Twitter limits are in place, you might need to start looking for your instant information elsewhere. And that was Megan Lopez reporting for us from Denver. So Earth is experiencing its hottest week in history. Yesterday's average temperature set a new record. According to the University of Maine's climate analyzer, the average global temperature was 62.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And that beats the previous record of 62.6 .6 degrees set on Monday. Now, these figures aren't an official government record, but the chief scientist of NOAA says they will take these figures into consideration. Scientists are warning the shear could see record heat fueled by human caused climate change. And the sweltering heat is causing problems for farmers. They're spending more money to provide relief for their animals and crops. Farmers in Florida say their water bills are through the roof from keeping their cattle hydrated. And farmers say crops are slowly browning. The heat right now are tomatoes. Uh, celery and the broccoli that's flowering is being affected by the heat. It's a super hot season. I don't know what's going to change. I don't know what's going to make it better. And farmers are finding ways to cope with the heat, including placing cattle in shaded areas. But the heat isn't the only problem that some farmers have been facing. They're also wrestling with feral hogs, causing significant damage to their crops. And Texas is seeing damage costs in the hundreds of millions of dollars annually. National correspondent John Moan explains why the problem is bigger in the Lone Star State and the actions taken to reverse its effects. Will Reno is a fourth generation rice farmer. We're about 20 days away from harvesting this rice right here. He grows long and medium grain rice on 1900 acres outside of Winnie, Texas. And he says around this time, signs of a porcine pest become clear. I've started in 2008 and my number one issue with growing rice right now is feral hog damage. Feral hogs plodding through his rice paddies raise concerns for his crops. For me personally, hogs are our number one outside problem causer. They just can devastate hundreds of acres in a year in a short amount of time. The rice grows in standing water, and precisely because pigs don't sweat, they seek out places to cool off and root into the cool, making these paddies piggy paradise. This is just a, one of their one of their traveling paths and like I said, this is one hog, so take 10 or 12, you know, you can see pretty quick how much how much damage they can do in just, just one trip. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Division says the wild pernicious pigs have spread and can be found in every county of Texas except El Paso. They cause hundreds of millions of dollars in damage yearly and not just to farms. Feral hogs have been spotted in golf courses, suburban subdivisions, even cemeteries. The feral hog population is booming in the Lone Star State. Researchers at Texas A&M University say a conservative estimate for feral hogs in Texas is three to four million. Feral hogs were introduced to the uh, Americas uh, from the explorers. They brought them over here as uh, a food source. DeSoto, uh, all those guys arrived basically in Florida uh, in the 1500s and they made, them, made it to Texas in uh, about 150 years. And so they've been here that long. Uh, seems like here lately they've just really exploded. Texas A&M AgriLife Extension agent Jamie Sugg says you can partially blame humans for that. In the 1930s, game hunters released wild boar for sport into Texas, and they crossbred with the feral pigs. And like many things in nature, life finds a way. You produce them to mature early, be very prolific breeders, uh, grow quickly, 
And so then you have the wild boar who's mean. He can live off just about anything. He's smart. Uh, you marry those two family trees together and you've got a pretty substantial enemy. The hogs have well Reno going to war from the air. In Texas, you don't need a permit to hunt wild hogs, just the farmer's permission. Hunters also trap the feral hogs around the state and have found a market for them. Well, I'll call the upscale operators, those that operate at a high level, such as retailers in Europe. They prefer U.S. wild boar because of all the food safety features. We test the animals for trichinosis. We check, test the animals for salmonella. We test the animals for E. coli, generic. We hit all the same criteria as if we were processing a domestic pig. One person's pest, another's prize. Trappers we spoke with say the wild pork is profitable. Texas A&M AgriLife says there are millions of dollars of traps installed around the state. Here's one Jamie Sugg had installed in the Sam Houston National Forest. Will Reno has traps too. Even with no restrictions on hunting, trapping, and attempts to put hogs in birth control, the pastoral pigs are proof that humans can't bend everything in nature to our will. John Moan, Scripps News, Winnie, Texas. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, a group of inmates is training service dogs, but it may not be the dogs who get the most out of it. Welcome to the place where people go to learn about their Medicare options before they're on Medicare. Come on in. You're turning 65 soon? Yeah. And you're retiring at 67? That's the plan. Well, you've come to the right place. Now's the time to plan ahead. Learn about an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare, And how a plan like this helps you take charge of your health care with lower out-of-pocket costs. Here's why. Medicare alone doesn't pay for everything. Your deductibles and co-pays could add up to hundreds, even thousands of dollars a year. Everyone's a little surprised to learn that one. Adding a Medicare supplement plan helps pay some of what Medicare doesn't. And that could mean fewer surprises and more predictable out-of-pocket costs. Call United Healthcare and ask for your free decision guide. Or talk with a licensed insurance agent or producer to learn more about plan benefits, options, and rates. Medicare supplement plans let you choose any doctor, any specialist, anywhere in the U.S. who accepts Medicare patients. You don't have to deal with any networks or referrals. This kind of plan also goes with you anywhere you travel in the country. If you're turning 65 soon or over 65 and planning to retire, find out more about the only Medicare supplement plans endorsed by AARP. Thumbs up to that. Remember, the time to prepare is before you go on Medicare. Don't wait. Get started today. Take charge of your health care. Call United Healthcare for your free decision guide and learn more about lowering your out-of-pocket Medicare costs and seeing any doctor who accepts Medicare patients. Oh, and happy birthday or retirement in advance. How can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to TryFracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to TryFracture.com now to save 20% on glass prints. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. For over 100 years, this light has shined. A beacon of the free American press. Reporting from Ukraine, Scripps News. And now, this light shines even brighter. Scripps News. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. So not everyone in an Oshkosh, Wisconsin prison is doing time for a crime. Seth Humanick from Scripps News Green Bay learned that some inmates are training four-legged friends to become service dogs. 
Oshkosh Correctional Institution has over 2,000 inmates, but 43 of them have a special job. They train and care for the institution's 13 future service dogs, who officials hope will someday make a big difference, but inmates say are already making their lives better. I'll tell you, this has been a fantastic. When I came here, I mean, I was, I myself had a lot of anxiety, so having a dog that helped me. John Lee is an inmate at Oshkosh Correctional and is part of the team that helps care for the dogs during their life inside the prison. In addition to helping his anxiety, he says working in the dog program has taught him teamwork and patience, skills he hopes to use to give back when he's released. When I get out, I like to just volunteer, you know, working at a dog shelter or help train the dogs or use some of the skills that I learned here. Journey Together Service Dog runs the program. It teaches inmates how to train the dogs and ultimately delivers the dogs to clients. Journey Together President Pam Schubert says inmates help train the dogs for a variety of roles, but the dogs primarily help people suffering from PTSD. The more that we can help them get back to going out in public, going to the store or going to busy places, Places, the better life that they're going to have. If we can help one person have a better life, that's what we do it all for. Jeremy Wondercheck says he's serving time for robbery and has been helping care for and train dogs like Dream for just shy of a year. He says he hopes his involvement in the program will help make up for his past. It really makes, makes me feel good personally, uh, knowing that I'm doing something to pay back some of the wrong that I've done. Wondercheck says he's seen service dogs make a big difference for people like his nephew, who lives with autism, and says he's glad to know his work could make people's lives better. We're being given an amazing opportunity to help someone, uh, and I don't think any of us take that very lightly. Just because we've made mistakes doesn't mean we can't be better in the future and doesn't mean we can't uh, help create things that are great and better for other people. And that was Seth Humanick reporting for us from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Thank you so much for watching Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Remember, you can always check us out on ScrippsNews.com. Now, if you are staying with us, there's much more news headed your way on Scripps News Live, including the arraignment of former President Trump's aide, Walt Nada. National political correspondent Avajoy Burnett will join us to break down everything that happened in court today. It's all coming up after a quick break. This year, Americans will spend $41 billion on auto repairs. That's right, billions with a B. Why is that number so high? Because cars break down. Your vehicle is going to end up in a shop like this too, and if it's no longer under warranty, you're the one who has to pay the bill, and it could cost you thousands of dollars. That is, unless you call CarShield. With a plan through CarShield, administrators will pay for those costly repairs directly to the mechanic of your choice, including dealerships. That means you get protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, electrical systems, and more. Plus, 24-7 emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and towing at no additional cost. And there are even rental car options to keep you on the road. I've been a mechanic for 35 plus years now. I've seen thousands of repairs over the years. My happiest customers are the ones that come in do have some kind of auto protection policy that's gonna cover the repair that they wasn't expecting anyway. I feel great about recommending CarShield to everybody I see. CarShield has a rich history of dependability, reliability, and success, and has been featured on leading networks like ABC, CNN, Fox News, and more. CarShield is America's most trusted auto protection company. My mom told me to call CarShield, and I saved $5,000. You should always listen to your mom. As soon as my car broke down, CarShield jumped into action, and I had my car back within days. I've been with CarShield for close to seven years. I have three vehicles covered, and I saved close to $9,000. I called CarShield and saved over $5,000. Yes, CarShield is a good value. Every plan through CarShield comes with a price lock guarantee, which means no matter how many repairs you need, the price you pay today will never change for as long as you cover your car. Call now and save money with your price lock guarantee. It's not a matter of if your car will break down, but when. Call CarShield now before it's too late. Call 800-287-5264. 800-287-5264. Eight hundred two eight seven five two six four. Hey there, thank you so much for joining us on this Thursday. It's always great to see you. It is now 1 p.m. in the East and 10 a.m. out West. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. Welcome to Scripps News Live. We begin this hour with a huge jump in jobs numbers. Private sector jobs across the nation seeing a massive hike in hiring last month. They added nearly half a million jobs 
tell according to payroll pro processing firm ADP. Now this unexpected jump comes despite more than a year of interest rate hikes and that data has sent stocks tumbling. Taking a look at where Wall Street stands right now, the Dow is down more than 400 points at 417. S&P is down about 40 and the Nasdaq has shed about 136 points. We're going to keep an eye on it for you. But the strength of the economy in the meantime continues to be resilient, so much so that the Fed left interest rates unchanged last month. But not everyone at the central bank agreed. Minutes from June's Fed meeting showed some wanted to raise key interest rates by a quarter of a percentage point. Fed Chair Jerome Powell didn't. In the end, the committee voted unanimously to skip a hike. Economists have also been split 50-50 as to whether the U.S. is going to see a recession. The government's jobs report is due out tomorrow. In the meantime, President Biden is in South Carolina today and will likely use the hot jobs data as he looks to show people there how his economic plan has been working for a deeply red state. Now, the president is visiting a state where every Republican member of Congress voted against his Inflation Reduction Act last year. But South Carolina is among those benefiting today from new manufacturing lines and new jobs. White House correspondent Haley Bull joins us now live from the White House. So, Haley, what more can you tell us about what the president is going to say about the economy today? Veronica, President Biden is continuing to promote his economic agenda today, dubbed Bidenomics, as you mentioned, taking his message to the red state of South Carolina as he looks to convince Americans that his economic plan is working. He's visiting Enphase, who in partnership with Flex is announcing hundreds of new jobs uh, through clean energy manufacturing investments in a solar deal in particular. And this is one piece uh, the administration notes of their larger uh, agenda to drive uh, greater manufacturing and job growth through investments from the Inflation Reduction Act. And in the Investing in America tour that President Biden and other administration officials have been on, uh, those are data points that they take credit for as they try to show uh, progress with his economic agenda, which primarily uh, focuses on the middle class the president saying it's a break uh, from what he calls trickle-down economics uh, more frequently adopted uh, by the GOP. Now, ahead of this visit, uh, as you noted, South Carolina is a Republican stronghold. Many there, uh, lawmakers there have criticized uh, the president's economic plan. Uh, the White House hit back, noting uh, the Republican opposition to the Inflation Reduction Act, while noting about $11 billion in clean energy and manufacturing investment in South Carolina during the president's time in office. Uh, but still, notably, the president faces uh, greater disapproval numbers in polling, particularly when it comes to the economy, uh, as inflation remains a concern. But White House officials uh, maintain that the economy is, quote, resilient. Listen. I think we've seen a really resilient economy. There's been a lot of conversation by other, other people, you know, forecasts about what will happen to the U.S. economy um, month after month, but month after month, we've seen really strong job gains, right? Over 13 million jobs created since the president took office. We've seen really strong overall growth in the economy. We just saw, I think, last week that first quarter GDP gross domestic product was actually revised upwards. So the economy performed better in the first quarter this year than we originally thought or was originally even measured in our survey data. So we expect the president to continue highlighting his economic plan and the contrast with Republicans. But ahead of the visit, uh, the RNC chair stating, quote, I'm going to read this for you, pay more, get less. That's Bidenomics. Voters in South Carolina and around the country reject Joe Biden's failed agenda because they know four more years of Biden means four more years of higher prices, falling wages and Democrats raising taxes. And the tax issue is one where there has been a sharp contrast uh, between the White House and Republicans. Biden uh, looking for more taxes for uh, billionaires and some of the biggest corporations and criticizing uh, the Republican uh, tax proposals. Uh, meanwhile, uh, South Carolina also home to Tim Scott and Nikki Haley, uh, two contenders for the GOP uh, 2024 uh, election spot. Both of them criticizing the president's uh, economic agenda leading into this. Of course, South Carolina was a state uh, that Biden lost back in 2020, but that uh, Democrats have placed in the front of the line in their party's primary. Uh, so we are expecting the president to speak in uh, just a little bit here.
All right. right. Haley Bull at the White House. We're going to be circling back with you for that. Haley, thank you so much. So it's been more than a year now that economists have been warning of a recession. But the big question is, where is it? Our deputy political director, Joe St. George, takes a closer look at why the prediction has missed the mark. Predicting the economy is a lot like predicting the weather. Sometimes meteorologists will say it's going to storm and it never actually does. And sometimes economists predict doom and gloom and it never actually happens, even though the year is only half over. There is new analysis suggesting that long talked about recession may not actually happen this year. So why is that? And what risks to your pocketbook are still out there? Any story on a recession should probably start off with a definition. Merriam-Webster's dictionary says a recession is a, quote, period of significantly reduced general economic activity. But that's not very specific, is it? After all, Wall Street could be doing one thing, the housing market another, while the labor market could be totally different. And that's where a little-known group known as the National Bureau of Economic Research in Cambridge, Massachusetts steps in. Specifically, it's these eight economists who sit on the Business Cycle Dating Committee. They look at everything that's happening with the economy and decide if a recession is happening or not. And the country, for the most part, listens to them. Okay, that's what a recession is, but the committee's been pretty clear this year that we're not actually in one. So why were so many predictions off? The U.S. economy's actually been quite resilient. For the best answer, it's helpful to listen to what Jerome Powell recently said in Europe. Powell is the chairman of the Federal Reserve and is partially responsible for all of those interest rate hikes that have happened over the last year. You see, basic economics taught us for years that if you aggressively hike interest rates, it will lead to a drop in demand for goods and services, which can mean less revenue for businesses, which can result in layoffs and eventually a recession. So why hasn't one happened? The labor market is really is really pulling the economy. Jobs are being created. There are strong wage gains. One clue could be what Powell said about the workforce. Unemployment has been below 4% since February of last year. And while some Americans have certainly lost their jobs, the data shows many are finding new ones quickly. However, just because a recession hasn't happened yet this year, it doesn't mean there won't be one. There's more work to do, that there are more rate hikes that are likely to be appropriate. Powell has said for weeks he still thinks inflation is too high, which means more interest rate hikes are on the horizon, perhaps later this month. And there are new concerns to worry about, too. The unemployment rate did go up in May, and there is some concern about commercial real estate, with more Americans working from home and more businesses rethinking the need for office space. It's just very hard to predict the economy. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Still ahead on Scripps News Live, almost a month after being indicted, the co-defendant in the classified documents case against former President Trump finally appeared in federal court for arraignment. Also, the fallout over the Supreme Court's decision to end affirmative action in college admissions continues, while some are saying the impact will be felt beyond colleges and universities. We'll have that for you next. And don't forget that you can count on Scripps News for all of your news throughout the primetime hours, beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. We'll be right back. We're back. Jesse, for $500. Let's find out. Can you take it? Who want this? What? Start the clock and go. Hair from the drain. <laughs> My drain. That rap song you recorded in secret. Yikes. Ooh, salmon. We heard you're allergic. I can't take it. Oh. Mimi, you ready? No. <laughs> There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. Wounded Warrior Project has been with me every step of my journey. Aaron, how you doing, buddy? With experiences that help me realize that I'm not alone. And specialized programs that give me the tools to train my body and mind. Now it's possible for me to get back out there. To get out of my comfort zone and try new things. To build and be part of a community that supports other warriors. It's possible to get the help I need for me and my family. I got my confidence back. I'm setting goals and I'm achieving them. It's possible to feel understood. Whether it's day one or 20 years down the road, they've got your back. And as each warrior's needs evolve, Wounded Warrior Project is adapting to meet them. Because when we pull together, it's possible to go further than you ever imagined. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe. 
with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. Carvana has hundreds of thousands of five-star reviews and counting. This was our second purchase through Carvana. It was really fast. This time we traded in a car, and next thing I know, our new car was here, and our trade-in was gone. Ta-da! Buy your car with Carvana today. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong. 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. Good to see you. I'm Veronica Della Cruz. So it's been nearly a month now since former president and his aide, Walt Nada, were indicted on federal charges. But Nada's arraignment was delayed twice until today. Now, the first time, the 40-year-old didn't have a Florida-based attorney. And then the second time, a canceled flight pushed his date. This morning, he formally entered a not guilty plea on charges of conspiracy, making false statements and mishandling of classified documents. National political correspondent Abajoy Burnett is live for us in Miami. So Abajoy, the former president, had his arraignment shortly after he was indicted. Uh, but now we're hearing about Nada being arraigned today. What can you tell us about what happened in court? Hi, good afternoon, Veronica. Well, Walt Nada, he showed up about 40 minutes before that scheduled court appearance. People weren't quite sure if he would actually be here, but he showed up. Once he went inside, we've been told that he spoke only twice, answering yes, your honor. And it was his attorney who entered that not guilty plea on his behalf. But one of the major things that also happened today, other than that not guilty plea, he announced to the court that they have a local counsel. This is something that was absolutely necessary in order for this case to move forward. Nada needed someone who's licensed to practice here in the Southern District of Florida. And today, after a week's long challenge, he finally has that person. We spoke with a former federal prosecutor in this very district, and he told me uh, there's certainly an immense gravity with the situation, and Nada is no doubt feeling it. And so in some ways, he's relieved because now he has a lawyer in place, a person who can give him advice about where the next steps are, but there is a lot ahead of him, a lot to go forward here. He has to review the evidence against him. He has to weigh his options. And inside the courtroom today, we also learned that his team, not his team, asked for a jury trial. And speaking of a trial, it is set to start in mid-August, but it is very likely that this will be postponed. The Department of Justice, they have requested that things be pushed off until December. But of course, it's ultimately up to the judge to determine if there is sufficient evidence to push things off. These are things that we will be hearing about in the coming weeks in those pretrial motions. But here is more from that former federal prosecutor who who talks about what happens after this point now that Nada has been arraigned. It has to be full speed ahead from here. In federal district court, the judges don't allow you to just sit back and not do anything. So he and his lawyers and the former president and his lawyers and the government, they all need to get this case ready and get it moving forward. When it's going to actually go to trial, and Nada is a co-defendant with the former president, Donald Trump. He faces significantly fewer charges than the former president. And I want to read some of them for you. Conspiracy is one of them, withholding a document or record, corruptly concealing a document or record, and false statement. These are some of the charges that Nada faces. But just to bring you back to today, he walked into the courtroom uh, sometime after 10 o'clock for a hearing that was set to start at 11. But once inside, it went pretty quickly. We had a producer who was inside and he sprinted out to give us more information about this 
within 10 minutes of what was supposed to be the start of this. And we're told that once Nada left, he also didn't say anything else on, on his way inside when asked how he was feeling by a reporter. He shrugged. The only record that we have of him actually saying something today um, was inside the courtroom when he said, yes, your honor, twice, Veronica. All right, Avajoy Burnett live for us there in Miami. Avajoy, thank you so much. In the meantime, the Justice Department is releasing more information that it says supports the FBI's search of Mar-a-Lago. The new version of the affidavit has fewer redaction and goes into more detail about what prosecutors saw in surveillance footage outside a basement storage room where classified documents were kept. Now, it also explains how investigators suspected boxes were relocated or moved to avoid detection. U.S. Supreme Court justices have gone on a break, but the fallout from one of their final rulings continues to reverberate throughout the country. That ruling ended affirmative action in college admissions. Scripps News political correspondent Stephanie Liebergen tells us how it's already been affecting college scholarships and other diversity programs. Harvard's admission protocols are already facing a new challenge, this time filed with the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights. The complaint targets the university's donor and legacy priority admissions, arguing it unfairly benefits white students. Up to 70 percent of the students who are admitted through these donor and legacy preferences are white, and they make up, in some cases for legacy, up to almost a third of the class. The lawsuit says the preferential admissions are not justified by any educational necessity. It's an unjust and unearned benefit, and these applicants are receiving the benefit based on work or money donated by other people. It is not an individual merit situation. It is not something where they're being considered as, on an equal playing field. And the impact of the Supreme Court's decision is going beyond admissions. In Wisconsin, State Speaker Robin Vos says the legislature will work to unravel minority scholarships and grants, an action that could amplify the impact the Supreme Court ruling has on campus diversity. I think there's no question that this ruling uh, and, the, and the policies we've been talking about, cutting off scholarships and so on, um, will significantly diminish the ability of public institutions to draw racial minorities into their student populations. The University of Missouri system already announced plans to end its race-based scholarships and grants. That decision corresponds with a letter from the state's attorney general saying that race-blind standards must be immediately adopted. The Supreme Court's opinion clearly stated colleges can't consider race in admissions decisions. But the opinion also opened the door for students to volunteer information about their minority status. What seems to be going on is that the burden has been shifted to the student. It is up to the student now in their admissions essay to make the case why their status as a racial minority should affect the school's consideration of their candidacy. Experts say the evolving changes on admissions and scholarships will have the biggest impact on elite universities with competitive admissions. The students who are most harmed by this are the ones we would most like to reach. That is, poor minority students or minority students at poorly funded schools who don't have college counselors or outside tutors or parents who are particularly savvy uh, in the ways of elite college admissions. That was our Stephanie Liebergen reporting there for us. Still to come, Philadelphia is taking legal action to curb gun violence. We're going to detail the steps officials are taking after a quick break. If you have this and you get this, you could end up with this. Unexpected out-of-pocket costs, which for those on Medicare or soon to be is a good reason to take charge of your health care. So consider this, an AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare. Why? Because Medicare alone doesn't pay for everything. And what it doesn't pay for, like deductibles and co-pays, could really add up, even thousands of dollars a year. Medicare Supplement Plans help by paying some of what Medicare doesn't and making your out-of-pocket costs a lot more predictable. Call United Healthcare today and ask for your free decision guide. Learn more about plan options and rates to fit your needs. Now, if you like this, greater freedom, you'll love that Medicare supplement plans have no networks and no referrals needed. See any doctor, any specialist, anywhere in the U.S., as long as they accept Medicare patients. These types of plans also give you more flexibility when traveling in the U.S. Your plan goes with you anywhere you go in the country. 
even better. These are the only plans of their kind, endorsed by AARP. Call United Healthcare today for your free decision guide. So if you have this and want less out-of-pocket costs and more peace of mind, consider adding this, an AARP Medicare Supplement Plan. Take charge of your health care today. Just use this or this to call United Healthcare about an AARP Medicare Supplement Plan. There shouldn't be a stigma around talking about mental health or taking medication for your anxiety if that's what you need to feel better. And that's something I know firsthand. That's why I trust HERS. They help women access quality online mental health care anytime through the HERS app. Get started today at 4 Sure, you should teach them to ride a bike. Then use Greenlight and teach them how to invest in bikes. Teach them to be smart about money and he'll go far. Super far. Oh, hey, Mom. Navigate the world of money together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. The WNBA is on ION. Friday nights, we shine a light on the brightest stars in the game. Bullseye, baby. This week, the reigning champs travel to Dallas for a crucial conference showdown. Can Enrique and the Wings always been one of the straight-up ballers in the W? Elevate over league MVP, Asia Wilson. She has been completely dominant. And the high-flying aces. The Las Vegas Aces versus the Dallas Wings. Coverage starts Friday at 8. Check local listings for games in your area. Only on ION. In Florida, we're learning more details about a seven-year-old killed after an argument over jet skis erupted in gunfire. Police say the child seen here was caught in the crossfire as his grandfather tried to shield him from the bullets. It happened during a massive 4th of July celebration in Tampa. Police say people on both sides pulled out guns during that argument. Tampa's deputy chief of investigations called the violence careless. One group was mad because the second group was riding their jet skis too close to the shore where the kids were playing in the water. When folks are careless with their firearms and they let that anger take over, and now we see what occurs. The seven-year-old's grandfather was shot in the hand. There have been no arrests in the case. People in Philadelphia are still struggling to cope with the deadly shooting that police say was a random attack. That suspect is now behind bars without bail, facing a number of charges, including murder. National correspondent Axel Tercios has the details for us. The 40-year-old suspect appeared at this courthouse in Philadelphia via video. He was arraigned on several counts, including murder and attempted murder. Emotions are raw in Philadelphia in the aftermath of Monday's mass shooting. Five people were killed and two children were wounded when an attacker wearing a bulletproof vest and carrying an AR-15 style weapon walked the streets firing shots at anyone passing by, apparently at random. Police believe 31-year-old Joseph Wama Jr. was the first victim. His sister's sadness is mixed with fury. I had a nervous breakdown this morning. You shot yourself. Jasmine, just try to calm down. I know it's hard. We, we I had know. nothing but anger. It's nothing but anger. I'm sorry. You killed the wrong person. You killed the wrong man. Kim Brady Carricker was arraigned on five counts of murder, as well as charges of attempted murder, aggravated assault, and weapons charges. In a search of a suspect's home, officials say they found a 380 caliber handgun and ammunition, as well as a will dated June 23rd. They did not divulge what was in the will. Authorities said they also found disturbing social media posts by the suspect, and people living with him said he'd been more agitated recently. Officials urged the public in such cases to call authorities to try to get help, and they reiterated their calls for gun control legislation. And to my colleagues across the, in the General Assembly and in Congress who want to offer faith and prayers to the victims of families and do nothing about the problem, to you I say your faith is dead if you will not do the work to deal with the issues. The victims in Monday shooting range in age from 15 to 59 years old. The suspect is being held without bond and a hearing in the case is set for July 24th. In Philadelphia, I'm Axel Tercius, Scripps News. The city of Philadelphia taking legal action to crack down on ghost gun manufacturers following that shooting. National correspondent Maura Siriani has more.
The city of Brotherly Love just filed actually a pair of lawsuits against two gun manufacturers of these so-called ghost guns. Those are weapons assembled from parts or kits bought online. And it comes as police there say the suspected shooter in Monday's rampage used this type of weapon to carry out this um, heinous attack. So ghost guns are often difficult to trace, but Philadelphia's mayor said there has been a 300% increase in the number of ghost guns taken off the streets recovered from crime investigations over the past four years. City leaders say this lawsuit against two distributors, Polymer 80 and JSD Supply, has been in the works for some time. Officials said that's because these companies uh, ship parts to people without really doing their due diligence, like even completing a background check. We have the equivalent of a mass shooting every single day in this country. Not all of it makes headlines. I applaud cities like Philadelphia and others for taking legal action. Gun Violence Archive and CNN finding there have been more mass shootings on July 4th than any other day of the calendar year. That is a startling statistic there. Now in Philadelphia, the 40-year-old suspect does face um, a slew of charges, including weapons charges and charges of murder and attempted murder. He's accused of firing randomly at pedestrians and cars Monday night, killing five people and injuring others, including two young boys. Deputy Police Commissioner Frank Venor said at the time of this shooting, the suspect had an AR-15 on him and a 9mm. Venor said both of those were privately made firearms or again these ghost guns. And Philadelphia is not alone here. The LA Times reports in 2020, the LAPD recovered 700 ghost guns. The city just settling a lawsuit for $5 million. Mara Sirianni, Scripps News. All right, Maura, thank you so much for that report. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't forget, you can always check us out on scriptsnews.com. And if you are staying with us, there is more headed your way on Scripps News Live. The future of Florida's new election law remains in limbo right now after a federal judge blocked part of it. We're going to explain why some voter registration groups are still proceeding with caution. Plus this. I'm Chris Conte here in Stowe, Vermont, where they are in the path of totality for the 2024 eclipse. And like many communities across this country, hotels and short-term rentals are already booking up. Could this be maybe the biggest tourism event that you guys it ever could, have? It could be. We take a closer look at the economic boost that appears when the sun disappears. Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon & Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide, free, with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high-quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax-free, and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide. 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. Wounded Warrior Project helped me find the strength to go further than I ever thought possible. I was able to come out of my shell and really connect with others. So I can feel like part of a team, part of the community again. It's possible to live better. It's possible to have a voice and to be heard. To feel understood. To find peace. Because I've experienced firsthand that anything is possible. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma, call now. Billions have been set aside for victims. You may be entitled to compensation. Call now, 1-800-712-3700. That's 1-800-712-3700. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Thursday. It's now half past the hour. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. 
Well, let's get you caught up right now on the day's top stories. Former President Trump's valet Walter Nada pleading not guilty to helping to hide classified documents in Mar-a-Lago, Florida. He was arraigned late this morning in a Miami courtroom. His first planned arraignment was canceled because he had trouble getting a Florida lawyer. A second planned arraignment was called off when Nada's flight was canceled. At the hour, President Biden is touting how his economic plan has created jobs in South Carolina. The president is in Columbia, where a solar firm and a manufacturer teamed up on a project that created 600 jobs. Former President Trump won South Carolina in 2020. This visit is part of President Biden's effort to show his economic plan helps spread states as well. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is in China right now. She is scheduled to meet with China's number two in command today in Beijing. Treasury officials are saying that she will not be meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. And her task is to try and balance improving relations with the country while defending U.S. trade decisions made for security reasons. Groups that work to register minority voters are moving forward cautiously in Florida right now. A federal judge blocked parts of the state's election law this week. Scripps News Florida Capitol reporter for Sanders explains what's next for this law and for those groups. Perhaps the biggest reason why this injunction matters is the 2024 election cycle is fast approaching. Now is the time to get people registered. And these third party voter registration groups say they would have been seriously hamstrung if not for this legal victory. Federal Judge Mark Walker didn't hold back in an injunction order Monday calling the new election law, quote, Florida's latest assault on the right to vote. In the 58-page order, Judge Walker paused portions of the new law prohibiting non-U.S. citizens from collecting or handling voter registration applications. Also, a provision making it a felony for registration groups to keep a voter's personal info. The judge didn't accept the state's reasoning for the changes and found them vague, writing, quote, the free state of Florida is simply not free to exceed the bounds of the United States Constitution. So we're moving along cautiously for us. It's very important that our community can continue to get registered. The Hispanic Federation is among the registration groups that brought the legal challenge, now breathing a little easier. Their operation relies on non-U.S. citizen volunteers and staff to reach and register minority voters. Without the injunction, the group could have faced a $50,000 violation per infraction. For us, that represents you know, weeks of work from canvassers, that means that we can potentially lose thousands of voter registrations because we have to pay the fine and not be able to send canvassers out to register our community to vote. But the order is far from a final word. It's just a temporary hold until the larger legal dispute is resolved, which plaintiff's attorneys say they're prepping for. I mean, we're hopeful, but we are a team that uh, worries for the best. Nothing is a sure thing, and, and we know that we have to build an incredible record. The governor's office has yet to comment on the injunction, but Republicans who backed the law previously said it was always about further bolstering election integrity. This is a bill that's about efficiency. It's about protecting the Florida voter and making sure that we continue to have successful elections. The state is expected to appeal, and legal experts say if that happens, the higher circuit court could quickly reverse things, putting plaintiffs back to square one. I think there's definitely a real probability that it goes up on appeal quickly and the appellate court reverses. I don't think that's the most likely scenario, but it's certainly a real one. What happens next will be up to the courts as this latest legal battle over Florida law continues to move through the justice system. And Florida's immigration law is expected to be the next 2023 policy to face legal scrutiny. There is a collection of civil rights groups that have banded together saying recently that they will file some kind of legal complaint in federal court in the near future. We don't know exactly when, but it's something we'll be watching for. That's the latest out here at the Capitol. I'm Forrest Saunders reporting. Well, the former attorney for Trump is being ordered to pay $89,000 in lawyer fees for two Georgia election workers who say that he defamed them. Rudy Giuliani was sanctioned and ordered to pay in Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman's defamation case against him. They say that he made false claims about them as he tried to overturn Georgia's 2020 presidential elections. A federal judge says Giuliani also failed to turn over requested evidence. The defamation case continues. So immigration is a hot topic in the 2024 presidential race, and the battle lines are clearly drawn. One area of contention, governors flying immigrants to other states. Now, politics aside, for asylum seekers, getting to this country is a story of survival and the pursuit of the American dream. 
National correspondent John Moan shares a real life story behind just the headlines. Richard is a 30 year old Venezuelan father of four and living in fear. Yes, I'm afraid. I didn't even want to go outside of where I'm staying so as not to mention my exact address. I haven't had any work. I haven't gone. Scripps News is not showing his face or giving his last name to protect his identity as he fears retaliation from the people who claimed that they were going to help him. Along with thousands of other Venezuelans, Richard and his family arrived in El Paso, Texas more than a month ago through Mexico, seeking asylum from an oppressive regime as well as safety and opportunity in the United States. U.S. immigration authorities granted him and his family humanitarian parole into the country as he awaits his asylum plea. And she offers me to go to California. They say they're going to help me change my immigration appointment for the immigration process. In June, 36 other migrants were flown to Sacramento, and the California Attorney General said those he spoke with told him they were promised work that never materialized. Richard says he heard the same deal. He told us two women and a man promised jobs and free shelter and that they'd arrange for a new asylum court date for him. All he had to do was accept a free trip to California. They told me they'd call around 5 p.m. to take us to the hotel. Richard said one of the people who led the effort was a Puerto Rican woman named Miranda, shown in this picture. It was provided to Scripps News by another migrant who accepted the flight to California. In all, Scripps News spoke with six migrants who identified the woman as Miranda and said she approached them with similar promises. Richard says the people who approached him carried wads of cash and bought his family luggage in nearby shops. He says Miranda and her associates drove him and his family to this motel in Las Cruces, New Mexico. This is video Richard tells us he recorded of the arrival. The motel's owner-operator told us over that weekend a large block of rooms was booked for roughly three dozen migrants. The state of Florida took credit for chartering planes to fly migrants, mostly Venezuelan and Colombian, to Catholic services in Sacramento on June 2nd and June 5th, providing this video as evidence the trip was consensual. Florida says it uses three contractors, ARS Global Emergency Management, Garda World Federal Services, and Vertal Systems in what it calls its unauthorized alien transport program, for which lawmakers have so far authorized $12 million. ARS Global, which is headquartered north of Houston, did acknowledge it has a contract more broadly with Florida and says it carries out services with compassion and expediency. But when Scripps News reached out to these companies, none of them confirmed or denied any involvement with the operation of these particular flights or the recruiting activity that brought the migrants we spoke to to California. Scripps News could not confirm whether Miranda or her associates were working for any of these contractors. But if there's a policy to have an open border, then I think the sanctuary jurisdiction should be the ones that have to bear that. DeSantis claims the migrants consented to the trips and knowingly signed these waivers. Richard tells a different story. Solo in only in English. Solo in English. Si, senor. Yes, sir. Nothing in Spanish. English only. I didn't understand anything I was going to sign. I mean, how will I sign something I'm not understanding? He told us he and others were coerced to sign consent forms they could not understand. I studied tax law and finance in my country. This Venezuelan man, who also did not want to be identified, fearing for his safety, said he was given the same promises and asked to sign a form written only in English. He ultimately opted not to sign. If I don't have a lawyer, I'm not going to sign a paper when I can't speak English. Scripps News obtained fuel receipts for this twin propeller aircraft and flight records confirming trips from Deming, New Mexico to Sacramento in June. We reached out to the company listed on the receipt. Representatives declined to comment. At the motel where Miranda and her associates put up the migrants before the flight, Richard says he grew suspicious of their motives. One hour later, the lady calls me and says, please do not leave the hotel. You will stay there until Wednesday, and I will pay you every day if possible until Saturday. He adds Miranda also discouraged him from leaving even when he insisted. He then got a text message which deepened his fears. See. Yes, they arrive in California at 2.30. Three hours later, they call me and tell me not to come, that this is a fraud. A fellow migrant who accepted the June 2nd flight to Sacramento told him that the promises made were not kept, and he should back out, saying they were dumped, and she didn't know why, and also to tell people not to let them take advantage of you. On June 2nd, that group ended up on the Catholic Diocese of Sacramento's doorstep. The diocese told Scripps News it received zero notice from the state of Florida that migrants would arrive. Richard says he begged to be returned to El Paso. A driver hired to help transport Richard's group agreed to take Richard and his family back.
On the second day, when I saw things didn't add up, when I saw those things, when I saw the cash, and when I saw that in front of me they never spoke in Spanish, never, always English, with codes, they asked me for my children's pictures. No organization is going to do that, not a humanitarian organization. And for migrants like Richard, aid workers say they are vulnerable. It's really concerning because you have people that are already traumatized, people that have been on this long journey to try and get to the U.S. Um, and then they arrive and they're met with false promises and uh, false information about what their future looks like. Um, and unfortunately, this is a pattern that's repeating itself. The congresswoman who represents El Paso tells Scripps News there should be a criminal investigation. We know, in fact, that uh, uh, Texas law enforcement has has identified this as unlawful behavior. We know that the state of California is also looking into it, but I do think the federal government also needs to look into uh, what I consider unlawful and uh, outrageous behavior. Richard says the experience has shaken his sense of trust. It was a hoax, fully. It was a deception because they did promise me and to many of my countrymen, they promised work, changing the appointment, full hotel stay, that is, for one or two months. John Moan, Scripps News, Houston. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, find out why a new study about the nation's tap water might prompt you to make some changes to your home. Plus, the challenges rural families face in accessing fresh produce. When you need something and you live, you know, 20 plus miles away, it's hard. It's hard. That drive isn't fun. We're going to introduce you to the woman meeting the needs of her community and upgrading its quality of life. If you, like many people, are covered by both Medicare and your state's Medicaid, here's something important to know. Now you could get even more health benefits than you already have. It's the United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. To find out if you or someone you care about is eligible, it's easy. Call now to talk with us. We can explain it all and answer your questions. Medicaid gives you benefits and Medicare gives you some too. But a dual complete plan can add even more benefits and features compared to original Medicare. You'll have lots of doctors and hospitals to choose from. Zero dollar copays on all covered prescriptions, including brand names. And depending on where you live, you could enjoy other benefits too, like more dental care and rides to and from your doctor or pharmacy. Most plans even give you up to $300 a month to help pay for covered over-the-counter products groceries, and new this year, utility bills. And best of all, with this plan, there's no extra cost to you. Remember, if you have Medicare and Medicaid, chances are you could get a dual complete plan. So call now to talk with us. Our agents are available to help. We know healthcare can be confusing. United Healthcare can straighten things out. And with over 40 years of experience, you can count on us to be there for you. With a dual complete plan, you could have a wide choice of doctors to choose from, zero dollar copays on all covered prescriptions, help paying for covered over the counter products, groceries, and utility bills, more dental coverage too, all at no extra cost. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, you may be eligible for dual complete. So call the number on your screen now to see if you're eligible or to enroll. There's more for you with the United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. One way to avoid expensive car repair bills is to be a race car driver. The other is endurance. Endurance saved me more than $7,000. Without endurance, breakdowns can cost thousands. With endurance, you're covered. Endurance covers nearly every car on the road. Plus, you pick the mechanic you trust. Act now for $300 off any plan, plus a year of elite benefits and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-855-588-2580 now. We're back for $500. Can you take it? Hair from the drain. Salmon, we heard you're allergic. I can't take it. Oh. Mimi, you ready? There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. Local, national, and worldwide headlines. 
breaking down the day's biggest stories with live reporting from around the globe. I'm Del Walters, and this is The Debrief. Live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. A new government study renews the calls for more regulations to limit forever chemicals in drinking water. Researchers found some of these chemicals in nearly half of the tap water in the United States. Exposure is linked to cancer and other health problems. Scientists collected water samples from 716 private wells and public sources, and they say their findings could help people decide whether to have their water tested or to install filters. So families living in food deserts face the ongoing challenge of stocking their homes with fresh produce. So what is it going to take for them to catch a break? Scripps News correspondent Matt Pearl found one organization that's been trying to make a difference. We are ordering produce. The work of Carly Wharton. Um, I'll have her check with you. 570390390. Is work few see. Get my thinking face. It's the work of running a grocery store. How are you, Carly? Doing good. How are you? Good. Awesome. In her hometown of Holton, Kansas. Population 3,400 and one. How would I describe Holton? Like Mayberry, basically. I feel like I'm so much more in love with the town now as an adult. At Cecil K's, the walls sing with touches of Holton and touches of home. It's an atmosphere and aroma that mask the stakes for Wharton, and those in her sneakers nationwide. If you're doing a good job running your store, out of every dollar that goes through your register, one penny of that is your profit. And so how many dollars does it take to get a pile of pennies? Of the nearly 2,000 non-metro counties in the U.S., more than 115 have only one grocery store. 40 have none. They've been replaced largely by super centers consolidated in county hubs and dollar stores without fresh fruit, veggies, or meats. Holton is a hub, so it's not too hard to make those pennies, unlike at Wharton's other store. It's in Westmoreland, Kansas, population 716. It's like not worth the time and money to drive into town to be able to deliver an order. Sometimes they're the only place in town that has a seating area. Erica Blair is a program some... manager for the Rural Grocery Initiative. Their research found two in five rural grocers in Kansas plan to leave their store in the next 10 years. We'll see you again. Yes. In Westmoreland, the grocery store only exists because the local bank owns the building and keeps rent low for tenants. When the previous tenant left, they called Wharton to take over. Now, Westmoreland hometown market sells fruits and vegetables in every shade of green. And then some. It's a welcome sight. Grandma doesn't give interviews. <laughs> to residents like Charlotte Naughton. When you need something and you live, you know, 20 plus miles away, it's hard. It's hard. That drive isn't fun. The challenge facing grocers will require solutions not before seen. But as Wharton knows, there's power in being the place where everyone goes. It's such a quality of life upgrade to have such a nice store right down the street, which pretty much everybody lives right down the street because it's only this big. In Holton and Westmoreland, Kansas. Thank you. Have a good day. I'm Matt Pearl. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, the craze over next year's total eclipse has already begun. We're going to take a closer look at how it could help boost one city's economy. That's next. I don't, don't want to take, take medication. medication. Wow. It's so refreshing to find, find a doctor, doctor who gets, gets what, what you need. need. Great. Great. Good. Good. Dr. Stafford just kind of speaks your language. Search, read reviews, book a doctor on ZocDoc. I've been putting off getting life insurance, and I'm not getting any younger. Have you been thinking about getting a life insurance plan, but just keep putting it off? Was that a yes? Then this message is for you. I'm David Denowitz, and I know the importance of life insurance. And that's why I'm here to tell you it's not too late to get the coverage you need. If you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can get a policy with a benefit of up to $25,000 and rates available at $5 a week. The phone lines are now open. Just call 800-354-6059. And your acceptance is guaranteed. I have a pre-existing medical condition. Is 
My acceptance guaranteed? Yes. Can I get accepted without a medical exam? Yes. If you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down for this guaranteed acceptance life insurance regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. And rates start at just $5 a week. Remember, if you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. Nothing's more important than family. So call now, pick up the phone, and get guaranteed acceptance life insurance today. Just call 800-354-6059. I'm 72 and on a fixed income. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes, your acceptance is guaranteed and your rate can never go up for any reason. You can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's just one simple question. Are you between 45 and 85? If you answer yes, don't wait another minute. Call now. The call is absolutely free and there is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-354-6059. That's 800-354-6059. Welcome to the Aura Sleep Lab. Getting enough high quality sleep increases immunity. And with your Aura Ring, you can learn how to sleep deep and keep your immunity up. Go to sleep with AuraRing.com. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. You're watching Scripps News. Streaming everywhere, totally free. Want to see more? Grab the app on your favorite streaming platform or go to ScrippsNews.com to find every way to watch. Go to ScrippsNews.com now to find out more. And a quick reminder right here, we would like to hear from you. Give us a call on our Scripps News Viewer Hotline toll-free. That number is on your screen right now. It's one 4 scripts Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. So Earth is experiencing its hottest week in history. Yesterday's average temperature set a new record. And according to the University of Maine's Climate Analyzer, the average global temperature was 62.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And that beats the previous record of 62.6 .6 degrees set on Monday. Now, these figures aren't an official government record, but the chief scientist of NOAA says they are going to take them into consideration. Businesses across the United States right now are betting on a rarer celestial event to boost their revenue. Scripps News' Chris Conti explains why a total solar eclipse is drawing large crowds. 13 U.S. states are in the path of totality for the 2024 eclipse. And if it's anything like what we saw in 2017, communities small and large are about to see a big economic boost. Sunshine in the mountains of Vermont can often be hard to come by. But while most days low-hanging clouds are a mere inconvenience, there is one day coming soon when around here they need the sun to truly shine. Have you experienced an eclipse? I have, but I don't think I've ever been in the path of totality. Jennifer Green is a lifelong Vermont resident who serves as the marketing manager for Stowe, Vermont. Stowe is home to 5,000 year-round residents. And come April 8th of next year, we'll be in the path of totality for the 2024 total solar eclipse. Could this be maybe the biggest tourism event that you guys it ever could, have? It could be. Like many other communities nationwide, the population of this town is expected to swell as people from all over the world flock here to experience the eclipse's totality. Blocked by the moon, the sun will go dark for 2 minutes and 48 seconds. Hotels and Airbnbs are already nearing capacity. We have a couple properties that might already be fully booked and some who are around half booked. So in any messaging that we're putting out and when talking to people, it's book early, book as soon as you can. That's sort of our, been our messaging since day one. The eclipse is expected to generate millions in tourism dollars nationwide. Here in Stowe, the sun's disappearance comes at a perfect time right at the end of ski season. Something like this eclipse is going to probably be a really nice little bump yeah. in money coming in. For us, it's definitely coming at a time of year where we don't always see huge numbers. I've got backup plans to my backup plans to, uh, to be able to get to where the sky is clear. That's Brian Drower, a professional nighttime photographer 
who admittedly is still riding the high of seeing the 2017 solar eclipse. These are just some of the images he captured back then. It's indescribable. It's, it's an event that will leave you speechless. Very few things in your life will do that. Drower says part of the draw for the eclipse is that so many Americans live in cities and towns with a lot of light pollution. So this eclipse serves as a monumental solar event that's accessible to anyone in its path. If you get into that zone of totality, that's where the, the, the magic happens. In 2017, more than 20 million people traveled to see the eclipse. For the 2024 total solar eclipse, an estimated 32 million people in the United States already live in the path of the eclipse. Cities like Dallas, Indianapolis, Cleveland, and Buffalo will all experience totality. You really have to be careful about looking at this. Very clear, especially if you use any optics at all. If you use a camera, binoculars, or a telescope, that magnifies the amount of light that's going to go to your eye. And while the eclipse is nine months away, the time to prepare is actually right now. And this fits right on the front over the lens of your telescope or any device you're going to use. That's what Jack St. Louis from the Vermont Astronomical Society says. Easier to just Put them on your eyes. Get those solar safety glasses and camera filters before they're in short supply. What then makes the eclipse so special? Unless you travel to go find them, it's a once in a lifetime thing if you get the chance to see it. There is another layer to all of this. It's about space. So I'm very much interested in the, the physiology of space flight, you know. And Jay Bucky will be watching the eclipse from New Hampshire with a unique perspective. What, what was it like being up there? Oh, it, well, it's, uh, it's a, it's an amazing experience to look out the window and realize where you are. Jay is a retired astronaut who, in 1998, spent 16 days in space. So he has a certain appreciation for the moon, the sun, and the Earth, and hopes this eclipse is the catalyst that could draw in the next generation of space scientists. For kids in particular, just to have exposure to all these different things and, and to let their imagination run, and then they're going to be our, our future explorer. At the end of the day, the sun's grand disappearing act will simply come down to a lot of luck and whether the clouds will in fact cooperate so that we can all watch as the moon, at least for a moment, outshines the sun. Chris Conti, Scripps News, Stowe, Vermont. And it will hopefully be a sight to see. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us today. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Remember, you can always check us out on ScrippsNews.com. And if you are staying with us, there is much more news headed your way on Scripps News Live. I'll be back with you at 3 p.m. Eastern. And in the meantime, Chris Stewart is up next with more of the day's top stories. We'll be right back.